Hi everyone, so uh, my name is Paul, I'm one of the co-founders of a company called Proud Valley, um, which is a spin-out of another group called Grow VC, which has been around for a couple of years in the crowdfunding sector. Um, I've been asked to tell you a little bit about where crowdfunding is at the moment and what kind of uh, expectations you might have from crowdfunding from coming from the IoT sector and a bit about where we think it's going next as well. So a bit of background on GrowVC, it started out as kind of one of the very early equity based crowdfunding platforms in 2009. It was set up as a uh, as a, a global platform, um, one of the kind of early pioneers. Um, in 2011, it had around $25 million going through the system. Um, and then earlier this year, we span out this company, Crowd Valley, which I'm part of, to offer crowdfunding platforms uh, on a kind of software as a service model, on a subscription model, plus um, the kind of back office uh, services like clearing and settlement that you need to comply with regulations in a couple of different territories. Particular eye on the US market which is opening up now as a result of the Jobs Act that's being implemented uh, at the moment. So crowdfunding is a bit like, I suppose, Internet of Things in a sense. It's quite a nebulous term and it means lots of things to lots of different people. People have heard of uh, Kickstarter which is kind of the, uh, the poster child of the crowdfunding sector at the moment. Um, Kickstarter, for anyone that doesn't know, is a way of supporting creative <coughs> projects, um, typically kind of film documentaries or hardware products or things like that. Um, and crowdfunding can also encompass um, equity-based crowdfunding platforms like we have in the UK. We have Cedars and we have Crowdcube and also the kind of lending side, so loan, peer-to-peer -peer loans platforms or loans lending platforms like Funding Circle we have in the UK. Um, so, people that have gone through the crowdfunding process talk about getting access to investors they wouldn't necessarily be able to access through their uh, personal networks, um, particularly for startups kind of coming from areas that aren't big entrepreneurial hubs like we have in London and Silicon Valley and other places. Um, there is an opportunity to make these very efficient markets by standardizing process, standardizing documentation. AngelList, for example, has its kind of golden documents uh, area so that you can reuse standard terms from shareholder purchase agreements and things like that. And also, as John from, um, from the group here said earlier, it's a great way of validating ideas. You can go out and talk about your, your prototype, your idea, and get feedback from, um, from the crowd. Um, to determine whether it's you know, whether you get the right kind of um, traction early on, um, it's also interestingly kind of a good way to access talent. We've we've seen as well part of the um, development that went on at GrowVC is developing what we call work investment models, where people from the crowd could um, invest not only money but also their time as um, kind of sweat equity. And we had systems in place where you could. Um, uh, facilitate kind of sweat equity agreements between founding teams and things like that. So that, that was quite interesting as well. So where crowdfunding is today is uh, is this really is hundreds and hundreds of different platforms around the world. Some of them are very active. Um, some of them are t entirely dead, and there's a lot of mixture in between. Um, some of them are uh, sector specific. Some of them are regional specific. Some of them are just within a city. Um, some are about startups, some are about commodities, some are about real estate, some are about kind of infrastructure. Um, and it's kind of hard to know where to start. And the problem that people come across, we looked at which startups were getting funded from our platform and from other platforms. And they come across the same problem that VCs talk about and angel investors talk about, that when they get a, when they, when they come across a startup for the first time, they don't really know much about it. It comes in, a, in, a, in an email or something like that, or a business plan left on an angel investment group's website. And it's a single dot, and they don't really know what to make of it. And if you think about Kickstarter, for example, they, their stats say that um, of everyone that gets 20% of the investment round they're looking for, 81% of those go on to get 100%. So where do those 20% come from, those first 20%? They come from people who are kind of the natural constituency of that company or that project. 
if you think about, for example, the Pebble Watches, Kenny's Pebble Watches was um, a, a kind of watch strap so to enable you to change your iPod, your iPod mini into a watch. And that was very popular, raised millions and millions of dollars, eight or nine million dollars. And you, know, you can understand how that happened because the people that reside, the people that frequent Kickstarter are you know, technologists, they're innovators, they're, they're the people that are looking for new technologies and, and new products. And they're used to MP3 players, they're used to watches. They kind of, they, that brings them together quite well. From your point of view, Internet of Things is, is obviously a new market, which is why we're all here. It can be quite technically kind of difficult to explain for somebody that's not in the, in the sector. Um, and it's often not a kind of consumer-facing product, like Uday showed with his seven layers earlier. Some of you will be doing kind of infrastructure plays or hardware plays, and they're quite difficult to explain to the general crowd. Um, so the one thing I think I want you to take away from this is crowdfunding can work if you identify the right kind of natural constituency for your product or your service. Um, if you are going on to something like Kickstarter, you know, unless you're a consumer product, unless you're a creative project, unless you're something that the general public or your parents or grandparents will understand, it's not really going to work. Um, so our kind of way of helping this whole system to work was really one of the principles behind Crowd Valley is we thought, well, either we can keep going by setting up more and more platforms and we can have specialist platforms for Internet of Things that bring together the people that do understand what, you, you know, what, what the Internet of Things market is all about, bring together those and have very small, very specific platforms. Or we could put in place a kind of shared infrastructure where um, people who, um, who do understand these things can come together and, and that's, that's kind of what we're building at Crowd Valley. So to give you an example, this is, this is um, a kind of representation of the startup ecosystem in Helsinki, which is one of our kind of early test cases. Um, each of these logos <coughs> is a group that kind of takes part in the startup ecosystem in Helsinki, some of the universities, incubators, accelerators, angel networks. And each of these now runs a kind of network or a community on top of, um, of our infrastructure. Some of them have crowdfunding side turned on, so they can actually facilitate crowdfunding between their community of startups and their community of investors. And other, other, others of them don't have the kind of crowdfunding side turned on, but they have um, they provide <coughs> context, they provide data that, so that when the companies do get through the system, they make sense to the people that are investing at the other end. Um, so for example, if, you, if you're starting at a university and going through these incubators, going through these accelerators, the people that have gone through them several times and become the alumni or become the alumni of the university, they understand the situation that's come from, they understand the market, they understand where they've come from. So you, you, you get past this issue of just being a single dot, just being a, a single point in time, which is quite difficult to kind of believe in. Um, with this kind of infrastructure idea in mind, I want to also kind of um, express the idea that crowdfunding is a lot beyond, is a, is a lot more than just startups. Um, if you think about all the different sectors that um, crowdfunding has gone into, all the different models that, that we use the term crowdfunding for, it includes the Kickstarter model, it includes the equity crowdfunding model, but it also includes all these other assets. It also includes things like commodities, things like real estate. Um, I saw there was a, um, an article last week about the local council in Mansfield um, raising money through crowdfunding methods to implement a free Wi-Fi system. And their kind of community of investors wasn't, it wasn't angel investors, it wasn't VCs, it was local businesses. Um, and they were, they were bringing themselves together, they were collecting monies and, and um, investing in something that would be better for the community. So these are all projects that we're involved in at the moment and as you can see some of them are kind of based on startups and others are, you know, are really other assets entirely. Um, one of the things I think to bear in mind is, as again John said, um, crowdfunding isn't a replacement for angel investing, it's not a replacement for VCs, it's something that has to work together with those groups, it has to work within the same ecosystem. Um, one of the kind of most interesting um, 
uh, models we're starting to see is this idea of co-investment models where um, angel investors or institutional funds can put money into the same system that's occupied by crowdfunding platforms. So for example, if a, if a startup or some other kind of asset gets to 50% of its funding round, then the rest of the money can be kind of automatically added, uh, topped up by local institutional funds or, or VCs working with crowdfunding as part of the same system. Um, so that's a kind of whirlwind tour of where we think crowdfunding is going in five or six minutes.